Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is William Vivanco. I have the pleasure to share with you some thoughts on the movement of ship genetics using embryo transfer. But first, I want to thank the organizers for giving me this uh, opportunity. I'll share with you the screen in this moment so we can continue with the talk. The main drivers of the movement or for the movement of ship genetic resources are the need to develop the sheep farming communities in underdeveloped countries or communities. The dynamics of the demand of the different sheep products and their profitability, because different times have different market preferences and this causes major changes in the genetic orientation of the sheep populations to fit what the market demands. Also, there are structural changes in the property of the land, and in, especially in the size of the agricultural family units. They are becoming smaller and smaller, and these units require more productive animals, more profitable products, and more efficient systems. The innovation and the development of new genetics is another driver because now we have every day new composites with new traits, and more efficient, different characteristics. The changing environment, especially the climate changes that affect the food availability and cost, and also the sanitary conditions. And in some cases, the desire to follow models that have been successful in modern societies. But whatever the reason for the movement of the genetics, this has to consider that uh, it has to be cost effective. So the genetic movement has to generate enough genetic improvements to cover the cost and produce a benefit. Also the value chain with, for the introduction of the new genetics has to be well designed and ideally have to be already established when we are doing the, the movement. And all the collateral effects have to be totally controlled and minimize, especially the effects on the environment and on the local genetic resources and in the way of living of the sheep producing communities. The community should agree with the proposed movements and should benefit from the introduction of the new genetic resources. This new genetics has to be chosen according to the capabilities and potentialities of the environment to which they are introduced. And of course, the local genetic resources should be protected, making crack banks or in situ and ex situ conservation programs. And why use embryo transfer for this ship? germal plants movement because can generate animals uh, by far less cost than buying available live breeding animals and in same times this uh, genetics is of higher level than the available live animals in a determined locality it's easy and cheaper to transport 
embryos than live animals. The fact that we can cryopreserve the embryos also gives the opportunity to have kind of an insurance on the new genetics that we are introducing. Also, it's a advantage of the ET because it reduces the risk of transmission of diseases um, because we, we do quarantining of the donors, treatments of, to the donors, uh, treatment to the embryos that we collected before freezing, etc. Uh, the embryo transfer is already a level of commercial efficiency. It is available elsewhere and is accepted by the majority of farmers around the world. Embryo transfer allows also the access to superior genetics. Nobody sells the best lamb or the best ewe of his flock but it can sell embryos generated with those top animals. And also embryo transfer favors the adaptation of the lambs to the new environments very early from gestation. It's already adapting. I will give you some examples uh, for the movement and dissemination of sheep breeds through embryo transfer that have a significant impact in South America. Uh, these movements of germplasm are done everywhere in the world, but I'm choosing this because I had uh, a direct involvement and so I know them very closely. Uh, the exotic sheep project of New Zealand, made by Lamic Cell between 1987 and 1993, uh, introduced six sheep uh, breeds in, in New Zealand, but the two most important ones were the Texel and Finnish Landras. Uh, this was uh, made under a very strict quarantining system, and from three original Ported donors from Finland and Denmark. Uh, we produced 30,000 lambs by embryo transfer and released them to farms in 1993. And from New Zealand, we sent animals to Australia. And from Australia, these genetics have gone through many countries in South America as embryos. The other project, a very large project, was the exotic sheep project for Texel and Finnish landras in Australia, as made by the Australian Texel Corporation from 1993 to 95, and also from 300 donors imported from New Zealand. We produced under quarantine system more than 10,000 lambs by embryo transfer in 18 months of operation. And as mentioned, Australia is now the main provider of textile embryos for all South America. The dissemination of the East Frisian breed in Oceania by Silver Stream of New Zealand also imported animals from Sweden and in, from 11 ewes and four rams imported in 1992. They then release more than 580 animals into the industry of New Zealand in 1996. And from there, the, the East Frisians have gone to Australia and from Australia to many places in South America. So you can see graphically what I've just mentioned. You know, the red lines are the introduction of the New breeds, Texel and Finnish Landras from Scandinavia to New Zealand, and then from New Zealand to Australia, and from Australia and New Zealand to many countries in South America. Also, some, some genetics went back from New Zealand to Finland uh, due to the 
interesting genetic improvement programs in New Zealand that the Finland people was in uh, a, trying to, to obtain. So some members went back. Following uh, the track of the Duni and the Dorper from South Africa is another interesting flow. Uh, it was done from South Africa to Australia, from Australia to New Zealand, and from Australia and New Zealand to many countries in South America. The East Frisian was also introduced from Scandinavia to New Zealand, from New Zealand to Australia, and from Australia to Peru, and from Peru to neighboring countries. So, the, the Scandinavian countries were the providers for the genetics that went to Oceania because of the scrapey situation. So they, they, they were free. But even being free, uh, the quarantining system had to be very rigorous. In Peru, where I'm working now for 10 years, uh, the Embryo transfer was the pillar of all the genetic reorientation that is uh, being done in, in this country. Uh, the objective is to increase the probability of the farming in peasant communities and small units. Uh, the strategy is that they should produce products that are very valuable in the market, like the fine wool, the um, lamb meat, and sheep dairy products. And for this, there was a need of genetics for the reorientation of the flocks to specialize breeds, and of course, the parallel improvement of pastures and infrastructure and the development of the value chain from the farm up to the supermarkets. There were more than 14 projects that we have been doing in, in Peru. 64% uh, of those projects are in peasant communities in the highlands and almost 40% of the projects in research centers, universities, private companies, etc. We have imported about 1,400 embryos to form what we call the elite genetic nucleus. And we have formed this nucleus for six exotic breeds. And within the genetic nucleus, then we apply all the selection and high reproductive technology techniques to generate as many rams to be distributed at farm level. And if we see the, in, the, in the scheme now, with uh, in the genetic nucleus, we apply selection and in-depth reviews of embryo transfer. And we produce live animals, embryos, and semen. Uh, the Criollo sheep, that is the naturalized sheep introduced to Peru from Spain from the 1500s, uh, has adapted very well to, to the different ecological environment, but it hasn't been selected and is a, a, has no specialization. In, and they, it has been cross it with different breeds without any specific plan. So what we are trying to do is to orientate the genetics, save the, gene the pure clear genetics in cryobanks and flocks, and the mixed animals try to orient those into um, specialized areas. So we have introduced the Poldorset, the Duni Merino, the Finnish Landras, uh, the East Frisian, the Texels, and the Dorpers for this purpose. And so we have 
elite nucleus of this purebred and from there we are developing composites for coast, highlands and the Amazon jungle. So everything is done by embryo transfer with participation of the peasant communities that they observe and they agree with all the procedures, etc. And we have generated many lamps for them already. They have incorporated these breeds into their flocks management and they are producing milking sheep, composites for meat production, purebred milk production, you know, and also wool, very fine wool, carcasses, milk, and dairy products. Now, the importance of embryo transfer for this genetic orientation is vital, but there is uh, there are some factors that are limiting the adoption of the embryo transfer, not only in Peru, but all over the world, in sheep. Now, uh, one factor is the relative high cost of the hormonal treatments and the variability of the results. Uh, the, this need to be solved finding new sources of gonadotropins, new hormonal regimes, and selecting donors, uh, either based on their performance with embryos or with the AMH levels. There are still reactions in the public to the methods for in vivo embryo collection, for ovum pickup and embryo transfer. So we need to have more interrelation with the public and do some improvements in the collection and transfer methods. We have to design better the strategy for application on farm of the advancing technologies. No? Uh, we are now trying to do all the sophisticated techniques at elite nucleus levels and then from there go with rams to the communities that have less skills or less technical level, etc. So, in conclusion, uh, Definitely, embryo transfer is a very efficient way to move sheep genetics and is one of the most powerful tools for genetic improvement, it allows very rapid genetic changes. So these many advantages of ET are sub-exploited. We have uh, less than 18,000 embryo transfer reported by the IETS for sheep in 2018. In Qatar, we have more than 1 million. So it's necessary to solve the limiting factors so we can have more expansion. Today, there are genomic uh, genetic value determinations. We have genetic editing techniques. And all these, I think, will be an incentive for the use of GIBET, juvenile embryo transfer in sheep, and that will have a tremendous impact in the rate of genetic gain. Uh, we have a whole array of sheep advanced reproductive technologies that are already developed. So, it's just a matter of designing the proper strategies to utilize them for the benefit of the ship industry in our countries, communities, etc. I want to thank you for your kind attention and I'm available for any question you might have.